All right, Kate, it's Thursday. What else are we celebrating today? Today is April 20th, Matt. Uh Uh-oh. You know what day that means? It means you're two days late for your taxes. Womp womp. Got to pay a penalty. It is the 20th day of April. That's what that means. Yeah. Yes, it does. I know in some circles, like stoner circles, yeah, marijuana enthusiasts, they like uh-huh. the day. And I don't understand, really. I mean, it's okay, 420. Yes. Let's just come out and say it. it's 420. Right. Or weed day. Why is weed day associated with April 20th? I don't, did everybody cure their glaucoma on April 20th? Or? Yes. Okay. I think it's a okay. treatment, not a cure. Okay. Treatment, treatment. I, wasn't it once upon a time they were like, oh, that's the that's police code. I think it was just like slang that maybe that was police code or like an urban myth or I don't know. Either way. OK. A bunch of stoners agree that they need, they should get together and get stoned on this day. And I, I don't understand if you're that into it. Why would today be any different than any other day of the year? Right. If you're that much of a stoner, right. isn't everybody. I yeah. guess if you're a once a year toker or something. Oh, OK. That makes but sense. Would you really? Yeah, man. I don't know. I, I, Kind of like yeah, drunk can't. driving on New Year's Eve, like it's everybody, you know, stay off well, the roads because. <laughs> well, the difference is like you're not getting off your couch potentially, you know, the. True. Uh, I don't know. So, all right. Happy 420 to those who celebrate. And no coincidence or coincidence, you be the judge. National Cheddar Fries Day. National Cheddar <laughs> Fries Day. So when you get the munchies, get your cheddar fries on. Yeah, for whatever reason, I picture more like potato chips going into queso. You're like, what do we have on hand? Mm, yum. Oh, really? Okay. I love queso. Mm. All okay. Right. And today is also World Arm Wrestling Day. I don't think any stoners are arm wrestling today. If they are, it's I picture like arm wrestling in slow motion. Mm. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Matt, a bear in Canada broke into a car and drank 69 cans of soda. Nice. Is that what you're trying okay. to do? Get me to say nice to that? No. Okay. Is that why he drank specifically that number of cans? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Seriously? You're, that didn't enter your brain? No. Never. Hmm. I bet you he no. actually opened 68 or drank 68 or 70, okay. but they were feeling like, hey, let's put that word in there or put that number the in total there. The total was 69 mm-hmm. cans of Coke, root beer, and orange soda. And there were three more cans of diet that did not get drank, yep. which I think is so funny. The bear is like, oh, hell no. Yeah, I'm going to stick to the root beer, the orange soda, and the Coke. Yeah, trying to fool me with aspartame. Nice try. Right. But the car owner watched it. She said it took like 90 minutes and he just hung out in her car. She tried to throw water on the car and saying, what? I'm a bear hunter. Get out of here. <laughs> that was the actual phrase she yelled at the bear? Yes. Yes. But okay. the bear ignored her and he finished drinking all the cans of pop except for diet. And she said he left when he was done and uh, her entire car interior was trashed. Now, how does a bear, how does a bear, what is the definition of a bear drinking? So it does. It just means they, it bites into the cans. And... I kind of picture it more sophisticated than yeah. a shotgun beer. I picture it like, you know, maybe a thumbnail or uh-huh. a fingernail in the top and then holding the can and drinking it. Yeah. Standard can right? thing is what you're saying. All right. I like that visual, too. Yeah. As opposed to like shotgun. <laughs> yeah. But almost 70 cans of pop. <laughs> How about that? Is that better? Well, I guess. Almost 70? Yeah. It's the, okay. the, whoever wrote this story, 69, come on. Really? I just think it's funny that the bear was like, yep, I'm going to drink your orange soda, your Coke, AW, you keep the diet. And what's this diet crap? And I trash your car. Now, aren't you just supposed to run away or make yourself, what, what, what are you doing? Well, well, you're encountering this bear, you're, you're antagonizing this bear by throwing stuff at it? I don't think that's proper bear safety. Yeah. And I'm a bear hunter. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) This isn't a Disney bear. Yeah. I'm surprised this woman didn't get Darwin awarded or whatever by this bear. (laughs) You know, unfortunately, she survived. Oh, kidding. So, Kate, are you sad you're no longer going to be able to get your Netflix DVDs in the mail? 
<laughs> I saw that. Yeah? How you doing? Yep. Are you well, okay? I don't even know where my DVD player is at the moment. It's in a box somewhere. Oh. Mm, I know where the portable DVD player is. So you're part of the problem. Yep. Not renting DVDs from Netflix. I actually had the DVD Netflix like a year ago. No. Yeah, for like a month, there were a bunch of films I wanted to catch up on. And the nice thing about the DVD slash Blu-ray Netflix, they would just buy any film and just mail it to you. They would didn't need to like own the rights to it like they do with the streaming service. So you can actually watch much better movies or more current movies using the mail-in service. Yikes. You know what I mean? Like they could ship you DVDs for Disney, for example, where all that streaming stuff now is all on Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Right. Mm. Right. So it's going away September 29th. We will send out the last red envelope. It has been a true pleasure and honor to deliver movie nights to our wonderful members for 25 years, Kate. 25 years. Mm, Yep. We're older than that. That hurts. Any guesses as their first DVD shipped? It shipped March 10th, 1998. Any guesses, Kate? Titanic. Beetlejuice, of all things. Oh, God, I love that. Yeah, it's a great film, but it's like from 89 or 90 or something. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 5.2 billion DVDs shipped over the course of time. The most popular title, The Blind Side. No kidding. Yeah, I've never seen that. You? Oh, it's good. It's a good one. Yeah. Unique subscribers over the years to the DVD service, 40 million, which is actually kind of lower than I would have guessed. But pour one out, Netflix DVD service going away. You're going to have to use Redbox instead. Redbox. Redbox. There's still Redboxes? Yeah. You're not seeing them? Um, maybe. Yeah, Trying they're out like, with grocery stores and I okay. don't know if Walmart still have them. Uh, they used to be pretty popular at McDonald's for a while, right? Yeah. We did that at McDonald's a bunch for road trips. Right. But they could fit far more DVDs in a warehouse at Netflix than they could in one of those vending machines, you know. True. And so if you wanted to watch something really obscure, you could get it through Netflix DVDs. So I actually do feel bad for some people who are really big in movie buffs who like to watch all that stuff. So. Pour one out. Yeah. R.I.P. Netflix DVD. Matt, how do you feel about people picking up roadkill and making food for their family? I had a feeling that's where that was going with that pause. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What do I think about it? Depends on how fresh the kill, right? Okay. Okay. And if you know if it's got, you know, if it's got like tire tread in it and stuff, that might not be very good. Oh, that could tenderize okay. it, maybe. Hmm. I don't know. What if you did not witness? Oh. When it got on the side of the road. Yeah. So yeah, there's food safety concerns at that point. Yeah. Because okay. it needs to be refrigerated within X number of hours of the kill, right? Right. Right. I've never consumed roadkill that I've killed or that someone else has, because I haven't lived. When I think about it. There you go. I'm going to go with a blank statement. I've never consumed roadkill. Uh, oh, okay. Well, that you know of. Someone could have put it into some chili or something. God, I hope not. <laughs> However, this man in England came across a seven-foot octopus that washed up on a beach near his home. Oh. It says recently passed away, but there's no way of knowing when it passed away. So what did he do? He brought it home, cleaned it, and cooked it. Maybe it was preserved in salt water. I still, you don't know when it died. Yeah, that's different than that's different than roadkill, though. You think so? Well, yeah, you've been to the lake before, I assume, and like a dead fish carcass is, you know, lapping against the shoreline, right? Right. I mean, you don't pick it up and grill it that night, right? I haven't done that either. No, but that's a different category okay. than roadkill. You know? I, you okay. Think so? It's still like you just don't know. Fresh water versus like the likelihood that there's like oil on its lower. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to consume either of these items, though, to be clear. Yeah. So what this guy did was he did an octopus stir fry. Mm. And he posted pictures. And on the advice of one gentleman, I simmered it for 45 minutes, then marinated it in teriyaki sauce and served it with stir fry vegetables. The rest of it's on ice. I'm hoping to make the most out of it. I could never kill such an amazing creature, but it shouldn't be wasted. People have been asking me for pieces, yeah. so I've given them a leg or two. A tentacle is what I want to say, sir. Come on. But what? <laughs> Chinese layman speak. Wow. 
Hey, you found an octopus? I want some. No, thanks. No, thanks. I've had octopus, but... Not prepared that way. Not washed up on the side. Hey, we found something. First, wait for a... Yeah, first, wait for an octopus to show up on shore. Right? This may take some patience. I just feel like seven foot octopus and your first thought is, mmm, stir fry. Dinner. Octopus. It's what's for dinner. All right, Kate, telling your musician friends you like their music when you genuinely don't isn't being a good friend. Go on. This is an unpopular opinion at Reddit. Where are you at on this? I disagree. Okay, so here's what they wrote. Don't give them hope. Yeah, that's mean. (laughs) Be happy about them pursuing a musical venture, about their hard work, dedication, and perseverance. Support them actually doing music, but don't pretend you like their end product just to make them feel good. It's disingenuous, and your musician friend knows it. Tell them straight up how you feel. They'll respect you even more. Okay, but if that's maybe not your cup of tea for music. Right. That doesn't mean they're not a good musician. That's what I was thinking as well. Like, I'm not really into death ska or whatever. Oh, God. <laughs> Do you think that should exist? That sounds like upbeat death. <laughs> yeah. Right? We should start that group, Kate. Oh, my God. We got the chops to do this. Uh, right. And we don't even need musical instruments. We don't. No. Yeah. I think you should be able to compliment someone even if you don't love what they're doing. They could still be good at what they're doing. The same thing with art, like artists. Yeah. That could definitely not be my cup of tea. You're right. It's subjective. Putting medium. But I'm really impressed with your talent of painting with pudding. You know, I don't know. Yeah, it's one thing to say your songs aren't quite my jam. It's another to say you you suck. Stop. Please. You're terrible. Yeah. And that's this guy is not saying this or gal is not saying this. Yeah, I think you're OK. One of my best friends told me my rock band's record sounded like generic hard rock. He then told me my death metal band's demo was, quote, seriously heavy with sickeningly good riffs. So he appreciated the fact that there was that contrast there. I don't know. Yeah, seems aggressive to me. I think it's okay to compliment people, even if what you're complimenting them is not your favorite thing. I think that's a good message, Kate. Put it on a bumper sticker. Yeah. Now let's go write some death ska. Right. Matt, do you ever marinate your meat? (laughs) Well, is that a euphemism? (laughs) No, 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 no. Have I marinated? Yeah, I've marinated before. It's been a long time since I marinated, actually. Yeah. Hmm. A new thing right now, people are marinating their steaks in Coke and Dr. Pepper. This sounds, I feel like maybe I've heard someone involving soda before. All right, what are they doing? I feel like pulled pork or like crock pot. Yeah. Meat mm-hmm. dishes. There you I've, go. I've heard of like Coke or, or Dr. Pepper. Right, but a good cut of meat? Yeah. You, you think you would use it on a good cut of meat? I don't. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't. Sorry to any big pulled pork enthusiast, but that does not qualify as a quote, good, good, good. I mean, yeah, you can enjoy whatever, but I mean, come on. Some people are braising their brisket in cola while others are cooking their wings in Coke because the heat turns the cola into a caramel-like syrup and the perfect glaze. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. But experts are saying the acid in cola breaks down the meat's proteins, resulting in a softer texture. But still in a good, softer texture way, not a mush, Mm -hmm. I guess. Right. Okay. But I'm, I mean, I'm thinking of steaks. You know, you marinate it and then you throw it on the grill, not just like pulled pork. You put that big old honka honka meat in the crock pot. And I think this recipe is very 420 appropriate. There we go. Because someone was clearly high when they came up with it. You know, it'd be really good. Steak and Dr. Pepper. Do it. (laughs) Yep. Except they wouldn't say it that enthusiastic. Let's do it. No. All right. Let's go. No. <laughs> and I would, I, let me see if I can, for the show, no. record Monty's face when I suggest, hey, let's marinate the steaks in Dr. Pepper. I have a feeling I'm going to get the stink eye. Do you think you'll get an additional stink eye if you dare to share such video with the show? Oh, no. He'll never know. Oh. <laughs> I see. Monty stopped listening. <laughs> I don't blame him. No, he catches the podcast. I get enough of her. (laughs) Right. Right. 
It'll be too late to do anything. It'll be too late for him to do anything? Yeah. It'll be too late to stop me. Oh, okay. Well, he can be angry with you. Like, Bonnie, I did that two weeks ago. You know, is that like a statute of limitations or something? He can't exact revenge on you? Uh, no, he can't. He can't get, uh, he can't get upset. He can't stop me from posting. He can't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No, can't stop. Can't prohibit. Can't. Can't know. stop, won't stop. Can't stop, yeah. won't stop. Kate, she's unstoppable. Right? Better try her again tomorrow. That's exactly right. Right. Have your people call my people. Yeah. All right, Kate. So there's the story about the kid trespassing onto the White House lawn. Right. Yeah. Made it yeah. through the fence there. Turns out they need more. They need more bars. Is that what they need? So that the kid can't squeeze through. I mean, he is a toddler. Yes. So these bars are definitely meant to keep out grown people. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't think they're worried about little assass- tiny assassins. Right. Little toddler right. assassins. Yeah. I, my curiosity on this was, okay, were the parents just looking the other way, you think? When the, when the kid's like, doo, 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 and crawl through there? I looked up the pictures. He's not wearing shoes. So okay. maybe they were like, he was in a stroller and they got him out for just a second and he bolted. I Yeah. Time for a selfie. And then whoops. Right. He went. Got him out of the stroller for two seconds and then he's gone. <laughs> right. And if anyone's concerned, they're like, wait a minute. What if they program a, they, they could take control of a tiny toddler's brain and have him become a presidential assassin. There's additional security measures in place. So they were instantly right. alerted. Secret Service was instantly alerted when this toddler crawled through this. Because what they've got, they're probably like laser vision or whatever, right? That would detect toddler detection. <laughs> right. The toddler the detection. Social, the Secret Service have laser detection? Probably. Yeah. Why not? Like Catherine Zeta Jones in uh, what was the film? The score? Was that what it was? I don't know. I just okay. picture like individual Secret Service agents like. No. With. Mm-mm. sunglasses that were like laser vision. Nah, so there's, uh, I was thinking like, yeah, in a spy film, you're trying to get the, the golden amulets or something and there's oh, okay. the little laser beams going all over the place. That That is just beyond the metal rod fence and that's the toddler detection laser ar- array. There we go. Got it out. Uh, yeah. Your kids ever come close to doing anything like this? Getting onto the White House lawn when you weren't paying attention? Uh, No. <laughs> Oh, good I job. think we drove by the White House, but no, they were pretty big. And Elliot didn't have a look in her eye. Elliot didn't have a look in her eye like, oh, I think I can make it in there. Elliot would be the one, but yeah. uh, no. Okay. Disappointed or proud? <laughs> a little uh, a little proud that she didn't try to trespass. Under the White House lawn. You know, on yeah. the White House, yeah. yeah. He is a cute kid, though. Oh, yeah, so... They didn't detain him. Had he been an uglier baby? Right, right. Yep, detained, questioned, guantanamo et etc. Oh, God. Kate, are you familiar with this story? Drunk, hungry, and sleep-deprived. Love is blind contestants claim producers put them through hell. Yes. Okay, can you fill me in? Okay, so essentially they're saying that they are filming for 20-hour days and they're not fed very well. They're not fed very much. The only, there's no windows. The only time they yeah. get to see the sunlight is if they go outside to use a bathroom in a trailer. Oh, Which I'm like, okay. why don't they have bathrooms on set? That's weird. But I also started thinking, like, what if you wanted to do, like, an outdoor date? Could they set up some sort of pod where you don't see each other but you're at least outside i don't know how you do that but okay having not seen an episode of this show i just Mm -hmm. read the story and was like oh okay so it's filmed over 10 days total i want to say it's like two weeks maybe it's 10 days but i thought it was two weeks it says lack of access to sunlight water and food during the 10-day filming schedule but yeah you're right there could be a couple days where they weren't filming in there right and then there was another contestant who said she fainted because she was so tired and dehydrated and underfed and they were just like okay get some water like there was nothing that the show was going to do to help her Mm -hmm. 
And there was another couple that was begging for marriage counseling. And the producers were like, well, find somebody that you like and get it done. And they're like, no, we basically chose this marriage. Like you should be able to help us. So So, do you think this is deliberate to make these people have emotional breakdowns on camera? That's what some of these contestants say from the previous contestants. I don't know if that's deliberate, like if that's part of the experiment. Right. Because it's not every season that has said that. So it's like, I don't know. That makes sense. Like, are you going to be more apt to falling in love with someone to get out of the experiment because you're so hungry? They're apparently fighting over one hard boiled egg during season two, according to (laughs) Danielle Rule, who got married in season two, but filed for divorce last year. Yeah, that was the one that her husband begged for counseling and they're like, nope. Now fight over this hard boiled egg. Yeah. Matt, just for the pun of it. Just for the pun of it. Oh, you know what this means. Kate's going to give us the setup to a joke, dear listener, and we are going to guess the punchline. Just for the pun of it. Why is a piano so hard to open? Oh, dear. Why is a piano so hard to open? Pianos have, uh, because they have 88 keys. Is that it? Is that your answer? Yes. Why is a piano so hard to open? Because the keys are on the inside. The keys are on the inside. When the thing's closed. The little thing on top. Get it? Yeah, you got me. Just for the fun of it. I thought it was because it requires 88 keys, you know, to make one. I don't know. Thanks, Kay. You're welcome. Yeah. As a pianist, I feel like a, I feel like there was more pressure on me on that one. I know. What? Wah. Wah, wah.